Dragon, he used to be in the Navy. How do you feel about that? I feel like Oda watches YouTube videos, bro. Like <laughs> he read a good theory. And was like, you know what? That makes like, sense. Ah, that makes sense. I like that a lot. No, I uh, I feel like it's typical. It's it's kind of expected. So it's a big reveal. I think you know what I think this is going to impact a lot more people that isn't as prevalent in the community or as active. So for yeah, like, like anime watchers. Yeah, 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 yeah. So for the casual, they're going to see like Dragon being in the Navy. Like, oh my god, I could have never guessed. Whoa, Dragon? Dragon in the Navy? No way. You know, and this is one of the yeah. oldest theories that we've had in the community for a long time. So it's almost like when things get confirmed, unless they're super obscure. It doesn't get the traction that it probably should because a lot of people make theories to get credit for them and so because everybody said that dragon probably was in the navy nobody can really take credit for it so it doesn't get the same oomph in the community and that's at least. sad that's sad yeah i feel like yeah. i feel like it's big like yeah everybody kind of accepted that dragon might have been in the navy but it's still big news man because hey it opens a door to old characters like a kainu I say old, but he's, he's still relevant. But he's old, though, in age. 55 years old. You know? But yeah, he's the same age as a Kainu, which opens the door to the theory that maybe, you know, they, they work together at some point. They definitely work together. I Listen, yeah. it's it's almost like the, the scorned, the scorned, like, boyfriend. The scorned lover? Yeah. The scorned boyfriend, like Naruto and Sasuke. Like he dated Dragon's sister, and Dragon made her break up with him. So now he's like, Ugh dragon son so you're her son okay i gotta get you up out of here but nah yeah. they definitely work together at some point especially because of I the mean, age they're, they're from the same class it makes sense before we go on though i just want to tell you guys about the sponsor of today's video skillshare i'm sure you guys have all heard about skillshare before it's a platform that makes learning easy and engaging. And not to mention, but it has courses on pretty much anything you could ever think of. They have photography classes, animation classes, and even career-related classes as well. Such as how to be a freelancer, how to break into creative industries, and how to launch merchandise on platforms like Shopify and Etsy. With all these classes and more, Skillshare really is the perfect place for anyone to pick up a new skill and learn. And the best part is you can pick up up and learn any and all of these skills whenever you want by using the link down below because Skillshare has an awesome offer for today's video where the first 500 people who click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare and that one month is more than enough time to pick up a couple new skills. So why not be one of the first 500 people to click that link down below and join the Skillshare community. The courses that I've been personally been checking out are Jordy's Advanced Video Editing with Premiere Pro and Pixel Helmet's Unreal Engine 5 for beginners. And let me tell you, those editing classes really come in handy. So again, click the link down in the description below and if you're one of the first 500 people, you will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Thank you, Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Akainu hates Dragon, man. I don't know what he did. Well, we gotta look at Akainu and what he is, right? He is the Marine's hero, the Marine's champion. And for him, justice is basically following the rules and everything that's wrong with the world is a pirate, if you're a pirate at all. As much as he hates pirates, imagine how he feels about people that leave the Navy and then become the main opposing force against the navy like it's, it goes against everything he stands for so for dragon i'm sure they probably had a decent relationship while he was in the navy it should, i mean they could have been best friends who knows but now it is bro you're my enemy and you are trying to take like tear down this organization that i bleed for i bleed magma for this i'm sorry we just can't be cool it's like kuzan right like, I bet when Kuzan left the Navy, Akainu's like, man, I've already went through this once, now again. Like, I feel bad for Akainu. Like, all of his friends are leaving him. Yeah. Like, all he has left is Kizaru. Yeah, for Akainu, it is it's tough, but that's heavy as the head, right? Like, that's yeah. that, that comes with it. That's why I love the panel so much when he went out to the balcony and said, I decided to become the fleet admiral at a crazy era. And he's going to drive them back into the sea. Like, that was dope, you know, to see that he's not oh, really, yeah. he's not really backing down. He's kind of like standing 10 toes down. And I, I love it, too, because when Dragon dropped the reveal that he was once a part of the Navy, he said that he found no justice there. 
And then you go to a Kainu and his sense of justice is absolute justice. Yeah. So it makes me wonder, it's like, wait, did Dragon know about a Kainu's justice? Did he not agree with it? Maybe a Kainu adopted the absolute justice to show that Dragon, you know, to show Dragon that justice does exist here, but he's just not seeing it. Like there's so many potentials with this. And I just, I love the line when he said that there's no justice because minus a Kainu, like all of the admirals have their own sense of justice. So Dragon saying that is saying that none of those justices are valid. Well, like, the thing what is, see there? Because what is justice, right? And if we have two, yeah. if we have so many different forms of it, which one is concrete? Which one do the Marines follow? Which means they don't follow any of them. They follow all of them. And it's, it's based on the person. And then, of course, it goes all the way to the top. So the top, the person at the top doesn't have a, a, like a like a decent sense of justice or they're not morally, you know, a good person. Then it's going to vary. You're going to have a whirlwind of different people carrying out carrying out different types of justices and for dragon is like there's no justice like how can we all have our our sense of justice there has to be one concrete way about going about things and the marines are just aren't like that yeah they have rules they have different things but it's like for the most part it's about maintaining power if i'm dragon i understand it because bro i'm I'm probably leaving to him like bro so there's no concrete concrete way to do things and then i have my stupid dad who <laughs> like it's i don't know he's just accepting all the badness in the world right it's just like i'm he's you know what garp is you know how like back in the day um our parents or uncles or aunts they believed in finding a job and staying at that job for 30 years and getting a pension and working and getting social security or whatever going to college going to college and graduating and like just that job security and it's like yeah but this is this is the this is a new way of doing things right things things have changed it, it, it's different now grandma and i i think just as as in regards to the navy and how they kind of moving forward dragon saw the writing on the wall it's kind of like yo they're not they're not moving in a direction in which I can stand with, especially with my grand, with my dad, who Garp is like, I'm just going to stay here and try to change it from within. Maybe how I act, I can influence enough people to be good people. And so I can start making change that way. Where it's like, I guess, grandpa, but it, it, it's no guarantee. <laughs> not fast enough. Right? It's like, a, and then it's not guaranteed. You're, you're hoping that how you live your life, it can impact people. Now, Granted, it has 100%, but let's be honest, Garp had to be more active for that to happen. It wasn't just a passive thing. Yeah, it influenced S.W.O.R.D., you could say, but Garp actively took on the role of training younger Marines, you know, and he's, I, I don't know if he came to the conclusion like, okay, maybe I have to take on a more active role as opposed to just going about and being the hero Garp, which does work, but what if I actually made a move? Um, and I'm sure Dragon was fond of that, where it's like, okay, now you're impacting more ins instead of just waiting around. You're not doing anything. People are dying, you're just sitting here. Like, imagine, like 38 years ago, you're vacationing and all this stuff is happening in the world, you know, so. Um, and then he shows up to God Valley and then he learns that Garp, you know, helped the celestial dragons get away. It's like, dang. Yeah, Garp is a great guy, but he is just letting a lot of things slide. But it's it's one of those things where it's like I don't think anybody in the Navy can even change that. Like that's that's a whole systematic change. Getting rid of the Celestial Dragons is not that easy, right. and that's why Dragon would have to leave the Navy and form the RA to even get that rolling. I, I was thinking about the Revolutionary Army and the whole process of forming that. It is just imagine it's work, right? It's work not only you're going up against the world's strongest force but you're in this world in which everything you stand for the world is against is created to go against so now you have to convince people to go up against this superpower you have to trust people that are you're bringing into the fold that they don't expose you and betray you because if they do then everything is over and again this is the beginning of this revolution meaning it's like typically revolutions and change it takes generations right Dra oh, yeah. dragon is the one who started this and he, it is still a process and he had a whole plan he was he's recruiting people and so it's like that 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 whole 
job that i think just that movement alone i i, I know you don't like the guy but um i think you got to get credit for that you know just throw me under the bus <laughs> no I, I i like dragon i just i want to see him do something you know i, I want to see him fight i want to see dragon like showing off his powers a little bit that's that's all it is i don't know i, I respect the grind but i want to see it uh, i want to see it I, and that's the thing i want to see it too but it's off of what he's already accomplished based on expectation or based on how hard just thinking about something like that and how far they've gotten you can't really put it into words he's the world's most wanted well we're assuming based on the dialogue and the verbiage and the chapters etc that he's the world's most wanted man ever meaning he'd ha have a higher bounty than even gold roger um which makes sense yeah because he's going after the celestials right like gold after. roger didn't do that with dragon though i love the fact that he was revealed to be a marine uh, i can't wait to see more of it especially him and his interactions with the other admirals or you know former admirals whatever but oh uh, yeah that's this is a big w big theory confirmed big theory and here's the thing there's been this ongoing thing throughout the final saga we have luffy versus kizaru garp versus kuzan do you think we're gearing up for another monkey family fight against an admiral we might have dragon versus a kainu do you think that's in the cards i always felt like sabo was gonna fight dragon i mean sabo's okay. gonna fight a kainu um because it makes a lot of sense him overcoming a kainu with aces fruit because let's say sabo's fighting a kainu and then a kainu is overwhelming him and dragon steps in it's just like it just re reinforces like yeah that fruit is just never Mag <laughs> magma's way better than magma's fire way yeah. better, you know um but something that went against like my theory of correction correction and somewhat vindication because that's like that's kind of like my logic behind it kid and shanks i was like well oda let him lose his arm last time against shanks you know that's a stain people sullied his reputation there's no way oda lets kid there's no way go out. they like, lose twice oh this one is <laughs> he, 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 he lost worse this time okay well yeah so it, you know it could happen it could happen when yeah. Saba goes out against a kind and he loses and he's losing badly and then all of a sudden dragon has to step in but here's the thing oda can be very gracious as well like maybe sabo versus a kind maybe this event does happen and then sabo in a brief moment shows that fire can beat magma with crazy hockey or you know strategy awakening and then dragon steps in he's like hey son let, let me do this i got some i got some beef with this man that'd be dope i ain't gonna lie that'd be really dope do you do you think there would be some world where dragon and a kainu work together uh you talking about in the future yeah yeah not like tomorrow but like in the future because dragon obviously he wants to reform the world he wants to get rid of the celestial dragons and a kainu we don't really know what he's fighting for quite yet he does have his sense of absolute justice but we know that Akainu, according to the Japanese Raws and the the di or his dialogue, Akainu is the rudest character towards the Gorosei. Yeah. Like like the way he talks to them, he talks to them with so much disrespect. And of course, the Gorosei don't exactly like Akainu either. They call him a figurehead, they call him a puppet. So I, there is some bad blood there. Do you think there's a chance that Akainu could assist Dragon if he feels like Dragon was in the right? And then maybe Dragon's justice is correct. It's not far. Do you think it's, there's a world where that it's exists? It's not out of the realm of possibility, but a few things has to happen. I kind of has to do like yeah. an insane heel turn where he changes his view on justice. Like in absolute justice, it could be a situation where, well, it's justice against the Celestial Dragons. The Dragon doesn't really care. But it would have to be somewhat an admittance that how the system is doesn't work. So it would be weird if a kind of dragon work together and after a kind of dragon have to fight so i listen i haven't seen any indication of a kind of changing other than i mean we've seen how he's been in a, as a fleet admiral which is completely different than i thought he would be i thought he'd be way more aggressive but he's the one talking the admirals off the ledge kizaru don't go to wano greenbull don't go to wano you know like it's yeah he, he's being strategic he's being a lot he's more strategic than i thought as a fleet admiral i don't know i can see it I definitely can see it because we don't know their history, right? Yeah, we don't know why Dragon left. We don't know. And if Oda can flesh that out in a way in which Akainu does make the turn because of Dragon, then I'm here for it. Because, you know, at that point, if the Gorosei are as strong as some people think they are, I don't think they're as strong as some people are making them out to be, then sure. Like people putting them above Kaido, etc. Like, but if they're as strong, like that strong, you're going to need strong combatants. 
And so you're going to need people like a kind of fighting against them because there's only so much Usopp can do. Oh, yeah. And I feel like the Navy will still be around post story. Mm -hmm. So I feel like the Navy might have to help in the fight against the world government to some extent. Or at least sword, right? Maybe some of them. Yeah, we, we need some marine representation in the final fight. Yeah, maybe some of them can they do They can't that. always be the bad guy. When there's a greater evil out there. I mean, like, we already have Fujitora, who's, like, basically the Marine working against the Marines. Yeah. yeah. So He's working for the people. Yeah, Fujitora is 100% 100% for the people. Like, he was fighting against the Green Bull while they were being raided by freaking revolutionaries. So, if Dragon in a parallel universe was still a part of the Navy, well, what does Marine name be? Because we have the red dog, we have the yellow monkey, blue pheasant, uh, what is it, green bull, purple tiger. What do you think dragon would be? White dragon. White dragon? Yeah, maybe. That'd be a good one. Uh, yeah, we don't have a white, do we? No. No, because there's yeah. been like, a, like I said, there have been hella theories about dragon being a marine. Hella theories. They brought out like the Chinese, uh, yeah, the Chinese bro. zodiac. Yeah, bro. They went, they went deep. They went deep. So I I'm sure you've seen this and I've seen it and I've talked about this before, but I don't know why. I'm a simple guy, right? Like, I hop online, I see numbers, and I go wild. Did you see the theory that Dragon will appear present day in ch in chapter 1100? No, I didn't see that theory. So, the theory is based on numbers because Dragon was first introduced in chapter 100. 100 yeah. And then Luffy was... Luffy had a chapter titled after him in chapter 1000. Oh so, gosh. people are saying 1100 will be the when will be the reunion i don't even know if i could call it a reunion because they've never met a union it will be when <laughs> luffy and dragon finally meet and team up against saturn i was like you know what that'd be pretty solid do you think Dr dragon has any potential do you think there's a potential where dragon can come to egghead island yes i think so you think he can make him you think he can make it here in 24 hours it depends on his power because if he can just fly then Sure. Yeah. Because, I mean, Kaido was going to try to go over to Marine Ford, yeah, right? It, and then Shanks stopped him and then he showed up. Yeah. So it's like, if he can fly, then yeah. Dofi oh, left from wherever the heck he was flying, like attaching his string to the clouds, just gliding. He yeah. Made it all these the guys are hazard. fast, man. Yeah. So if he can fly, it's, you know, I, I don't know if he can, like, do you consider what Dofi, did? he's gliding. Yeah. He's doing like a little bit he's of a Spider-Man action, swinging. right? He's swinging. Yeah. He's swinging from clouds. Yeah. Dragon, if he has any wind related power, because... If we're putting him on the same area as a Kainu and Kizaru and all them, then there's a good chance that Dragon does have a Logia power. And Wind Logia could be a thing. Yeah. So, hey, I would like to imagine with wind powers you could fly. Just like Aang from the Avatar. You know what's crazy? Like, the simpler times, because um, I'm looking at a clip now of Doflamingo just gliding on clouds when Doflamingo was a threat. Like, Doflamingo oh, pulling up. It's like... The good old days. <laughs> we, yeah, like you said, when times were a lot simpler. Yeah. You know. And now... You can't bring up Doflamingo without somebody bringing up Jack from the Beast Pirates, uh, Cracker. Yeah, you know. Oh, man. Like, oh, but how would Doflamingo fight against Saturn? And it's like, oh, he's right. You know, like, what would Doflamingo do here? I don't know. Maybe the Conqueror's <laughs> Hockey would come in clutch, but yeah, but who knows? Yeah, Prison but body Doflamingo could go crazy. Based on power creep, it's hard to scale him, but Dofi, yeah. Dofi's one of the best fighters we've seen in the story. He'll come back into relevancy somehow. I feel like he has to fight a Celestial Dragon. With how much he hates Celestial Dragons, I want to throw him in there too. Anybody who shows any disdain for, for Celestial Dragons could join us in the final war. And that's why I brought in Akainu, just because he's so dang rude to him. Like maybe Dragon beats Akainu, then Akainu's like, ah, dang. I'll help him this one time for old time's sake. You know, I was thinking of some a situation like that. It's kind of like Magneto and Professor X. Because Magneto and X were working together back in the day. Right, trying to grow something together. Magneto leaves because he's like, yo, this ain't working. And then he kind of starts his own thing that's a lot more radical. And then at the very end, they come they back come together. They come back together to fight against the powers that be. That's how it, man. And people eat it up too. You can't tell me people would not eat up a dragon and a Kainu team up. I think we figured out the... Especially after like a dragon and a Kainu flashback where we know like what went wrong. Yeah. Oh, man. You can't tell me a Kainu's not thinking about dragon because... Ever since Dragon abandoned the Marines, I feel like that's why Akainu doesn't like deserters. Like at Marine Corps, mm -hmm. we saw Akainu get them. rid of some random dude who's trying to leave. And it's like, oh, maybe he's thinking about Dragon. Like, yo, like Dragon did this exact same thing. He was running away, huh? Yeah. Maybe there's something there, man. I like it. 
feels bad. I, feels bad. I like it. I like it. Ooh. Well, hey, Morago, thank you uh, so much for stopping by. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Always a great time. Always a great time. Yeah. I was like, you know what? Since we have to talk about Akainu, I got to bring the big man in himself. I mean, every time Akainu's involved, uh, I'm down. <laughs> Your favorite character. <laughs> I know, he's definitely I, mine. It's crazy. I, I put him top three. Because he's not even in my top five. Really? Yeah. He's, I don't even, he I don't, I'm not 10? even sure if he's in my top ten. That okay, that's actually blasphemous. Don't say that too loudly. It's gonna ruin people's perception of you. Uh, I don't know if any admiral other than maybe Garp. Garp? Okay. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Garp might be tough. I mean, hot, like it's category. We got the law, we got ace, we got Doflamingo, you got Shanks. Hey, you put Ace in your top ten? He's in my top five. Top three. What? What what scene sold you with Ace? The first one. Like where they meet in uh, Alabasta, no, in Drum or the Kingdom. first one, like in in Drum King. No, <laughs> that. Oh, I was hoping you wouldn't say Drum. That's the, okay. Now you're joking. There's no way Ace wearing all black in Drum Kingdom, like sway inside like, the side, oh, sold he's you. Just like me for real. No way. <laughs> he was wearing all black, right? He's wearing all black, like, just walking through. Yeah. yeah it's like, Oda, Oda gave him like a little silhouette in the anime, dude. Yep, yeah, that's all. That's crazy. That's it. That's all I needed. And then and he's like, I'm looking for a guy named Blackbeard. Listen, I think mostly I like Ace a lot because he's an older brother and I'm an older brother. And a lot of the things okay. he stands for is kind of, you know. Yeah. So I, I think it's more. I resonate with the character, you know, and I relate to him. OK. Yeah. See, I, I like that you have a, a reason grounded in reality, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, re it relates to your daily life. And the, the reason why I like a Kainu is because he reminds me of my dad and my upbringing where it's just like that absolute justice. He's really um headstrong. My dad actually looks a little bit like a Kainu too. So it's like, ah. you know, I, I respect it. I respect it. Oh, that's dope. Yeah. That's dope. So I also have a, a grounded reason for liking good old Akainu. And yeah, you could say he's brutal, but it's, it's in a, in a way it is, it is justice though, you know? No, it, it is. Like in Akainu's eyes, Ace is a bad guy. Luffy's a bad guy. Like he's not exactly like, Taking the time to like look at the car facts, he's just black and white. Yeah, but very black and white. You're you are yeah. a, you know, you're a pirate, and pirates there's a, a thing that comes with it. So, yeah, he's like an old school parent. That's why I, I respect it. You know. Yeah, I love the guy. Yeah. Well, hey, thank you again, man. Absolutely. Thank you again, and thank you guys for watching. We'll catch you guys next week. Uh, we're finally getting three chapters in a row. That's kind of big. Uh, yeah, I think this three is the chapters first in a row. Time uh, in months. Yeah, but just I don't know if it's gonna happen anytime soon after this. So yeah, you don't think it's gonna happen again? Oh, man, we're going into the holiday season. You know how crazy it gets. Yeah, you know Oda's gonna take a uh, Christmas off, New Year's off, Thanksgiving. And you can't tell me. I know people are gonna say, "Oh, but it's Japan. They don't celebrate Christmas, <laughs> dude." Japan loves Christmas. Let me tell you. Yeah, yeah. Right yeah. when Halloween is over, you got. Colonel Sanders dressed up as Santa Claus. You got fake snow littering Shibuya. Like, oh man. Yeah. The Japanese love Christmas. Yeah. It's, it's, they, they, they celebrate. So just, they celebrate hard. Be ready. I think it's because there's not a lot of Japanese holidays out there. Ah, uh, okay. So, so just like take advantage of the ones that the world celebrates. Cause that's kind of yeah, how it is. Yeah. Like in the Caribbean, like a lot of people celebrate, celebrate like Halloween and like Thanksgiving and stuff. I like, <laughs> Yeah, 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 they don't even know where like it stems from yeah, or like the, the like, religion eh, behind it or anything. Whatever. It's just like, oh, dude, yeah, you know, d d people just want to have fun. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, it's nice. It's lighthearted, right? And plus, like, there's no Japanese holiday that permeates through America, right? No, not really. Yeah, no, I can't think of it. They any. just they just want to partake in a worldwide celebration. That's all it is. And I I admire that, dude. I'm with it. It's simple. It's simple. But, so yeah, expect no chapter during Christmas or the New Year. There'll be videos though. Yeah, uh, th there'll be videos um, where we talk about Brago's top five. Yeah, well, maybe we'll work through that. Maybe we'll work through that. We'll see. I got to actually make the list, and then we'll we'll get there. Then yeah, I, I'll you got to make it. the list. I already got mine, dude. I'm ready. I got to make the list. Once I make the list, I'll reveal it for sure. I, I stay strapped with the top five. I got Rob Lucci, oh, Mihawk, no. Akainu, Crocodile, and, uh, you know, I'd be hard-pressed, but I think I'd throw Doflamingo in there. You have a man in there that hunts rabbits? Wow. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, Not Doflamingo, Garling. There we go. That's better. Garling. Watch this, kids. 
<laughs> Watch this, kids. I'll show you how it's done. Time to go hunt some rabbits. Gar Did you see they made a correction? Oh yeah, about the uh, in the chapter. Yeah. In the chapter. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Not not just the kid line. If you guys know what we're talking about, Garling says, "Hey kids, watch this." Yeah. But Garling, instead of getting ten thousand points mid chapter, he gets a hundred thousand. He's a champion. Garling's a monster. He's a champ for a reason. Yeah. So uh, you know that that boosted him up into the top five. But hey, thank you guys again <laughs> for watching, and we'll catch you guys later. Peace out. Peace out.